Um, about my talk, I will start reviewing uh, our paper from our old paper from from May uh, with uh, SB Radu, uh, Shashen, and Mao, um, and then I will show some uh, new things I have been working in. Just the uh, the obvious follow up um, based on an upcoming paper with uh, Dimitris Kosmopoulos, who is a student in in UCLA. So, um, a not very needed motivation. I mean, the right room to skip a long uh, introduction. So, um, we live in an era of gravitational waves. And this is the schedule from uh, our meeting. And these are the talks related with classical gravity. So, we can see that um, the need for precision and to apply all of our techniques from, uh, from amplitudes um, has driven the the community to, to think about these problems. So let me go back and review the, um, the old paper. So what we do is, uh, what we want to do is describe the uh, dynamics of a, a binary system, uh, extracting information from scattering amplitudes. Um, and the way we will do this is by matching uh, to an effective field theory. So how do we compute in the full theory? We start with a Lagrangian. And I know lots of people here are completely to this. So this is kind of a bad word, but that's okay. We only need to compute a Compton amplitude. It's just for diagrams. There's, there's no shame in it. Um, the real reason is that a Lagrangian uh, will give us uh, the perfect way to classify uh, interactions um, in our theory. And this Lagrangian uh, describes uh, rank S uh, tensors. So it will describe higher spin uh, fields. Um, once we compute the Compton, uh, we put them together into unitarity cuts and we use generalized unitarity to uh, integrate to one loop. On the other side, we start with an effective action, uh, which is an extension of the non relativistic effective action of uh, Chung, Rothstein, and and so on, um, that describe the long range interaction of, this, of these fields. So um, from the rules of this, of this action, we compute the relevant diagrams. Um, in this theory, all of the uh, diagrams are just iterated bubbles. We are at one loop, so we only need like the contact interaction and the, and the one loop one. We integrate that um, using uh, IVP symbol. And from the matching, we obtain the Hamiltonian to describe the binary dyna dynamics. And once we have that Hamiltonian, we go and compute uh, observables. So a few words about our Lagrangian. Um, it describes uh, rank S tensor fields minimally coupled to gravity. So minimally coupled in the sense uh, partial derivative goes to covariant derivative. Um, our fields are symmetric uh, and traceless. They are not transverse. That's okay for our problem. We won't encounter any, any trouble there. Because of this uh, symmetry and tracelessness, the covariant derivative can be expressed as a contraction of the spin connection uh, with the Lorentz generator. So then uh, we will find this kind of objects in the, uh, in the amplitude that has a Lorentz generator uh, sandwich with uh, polarization tensors that describe the, um, the physical states. The way we take our classical limits, um, this yields a spin tensor, a classical spin tensor and a product of polarization tensors. So um, this is spin, um, the spin tensor of the spin or the spin vector we obtain as a boost from the rest frame uh, spins to, in this case, the uh, center of mass frame. Okay, so once we have our action, uh, then we consider um, like a, a weak field uh, expansion and we can obtain uh, Feynman rules and go compute Feynman diagrams.
Um, once we have our Compton amplitude, that is our ingredient for the unitarity cuts, we sew them into a three and four particle cuts. Well, first into two particle cuts, and then we could one more and you have a three particle cut and another and you have the four particle cut. So one nice thing about the amplitudes, the way we have them, the way we have them there is that they satisfy this general word identity. So um, the sum of states should produce a projector like this with like terms, but because of the way uh, we have the amplitude, all of this will not contribute. So then we can only use, um, say, the donder uh, like structure to show the, the gravitons. Um, and finally, from the cuts, uh, one can use generalized unitarity methods. Uh, we use a method uh, of four to obtain box and triangle coefficients. And these integrals are known, uh, at least um, in the way that we that we need them to match the, the EFT. So then we declare we have our, our amplitude. On the other side, um, as I mentioned, we start with this effective uh, effective action that describes non relativistic fields. In this case, uh, we will uh, want them to carry uh, to carry spin. So. Uh, the potential that um, that makes the, the fields interact, we will write like this. So similar to the one that was used in the spinless case, uh, that is just an expansion uh, in, in powers of G uh, to the relevant order to describe uh, long range. And operators that carry the spin, and they are uh, they have to respect the, the um, uh, classical counting. So. Um, Rule of thumb is uh, Q is small, S is large. So then to have something classical, you need as many powers of Q as you have powers of, of S. So from our uh, from our action, we deduce uh, Feynman rules. So we have a kinetic term that gives us a propagator that is there, for example. And we have this contact term um, that gives us the, the potential in the way it was uh, shown before, like an ansatz. Um, and we can go and compute up to the uh, one loop amplitude. So the propagator here, after integrating uh, energy, it looks like an effective uh, two body uh, propagator. And then the potential appears here from the contacts and then here in an iteration. Um, we write our uh, EFT amplitudes in this form. So we, um, we split uh, coefficients of the mentioned um, operators with the right classical counting. So what we obtain is uh, this kind of uh, coefficients that have the these that are the, uh, the coefficients in the, in the potential. And we have this kind of uh, functions that come from the integral reduction. Okay, so then uh, by doing the matching, we can translate to a Hamiltonian, where again, it's given as coefficients with the same form as, uh, as before of the right spin operators. The coefficients that appear in the Hamiltonian are determined uh, for matching to the full theory, this A's, uh, that were the um, that is the information that we have from from full theory, and you have a bunch of iteration pieces. But anyway, now we have we have a Hamiltonian. From it, uh, we can start determining um, physical observables in a scattering process. So we have uh, equations of motion. We solve them perturbatively. And straightforwardly, we get our uh, impulse or angular impulse. OK, so this is what I just described to you is the process to get a one loop full theory amplitude, a one loop effective, uh, effective theory amplitude. And we match them of the Hamiltonian. And then we get observables. But the trend now is to cut the middle one. 
So um, people don't like the, the EFT, people don't like the Hamiltonian, people want to go directly from full theory to observables. And we have uh, seen uh, during this week several approaches, um, the B2B of uh, Kalin and Liu and, and Porto. Then there is the technology from KMOC and uh, new collaborators. And um, there is also Iconal that uh, it's, it's similar in principle. Um, and there are lots and lots of uh, collaborators and lots and lots, of, lots and lots of talks this week. Um, I'm sure I'm missing someone. I'm sorry. It's, it's not personal. It's just too many people working on, on these things. So can we do something in, uh, in this spirit? So we have an object uh, that it's like an uh, iconal phase um, in that it's the Fourier transform to impact parameter space. And by looking too hard into the, um, into the computation we've, we got from Hamiltonian, we see that it fits in these uh, formulas. So one can compute um, the uh, impulse and the change in spin from uh, taking a source of Poisson brackets with our iconal phase. And the one for the impulse is not uh, so surprising because um, that is very similar in spirit to what uh, Iconal does. It was kind of a surprise that all of the changes in spin uh, could be codified and in a very parallel uh, fashion um, just by this uh, Iconal phase like object. So um, one of the funny things is that we have this uh, funny Poisson brackets that takes derivative um, with respect to, to spin and with um, orbital angular momentum. From looking at this uh, formula, we can conjecture an order generalization. Here, uh, that uh, D contains our funny, our funny friend. Okay. So um, this is a, a conjecture, um, a nice one because those five pages shown there is our ancillary file for the uh, delta p and delta s that we computed uh, to order g squared in our paper. And all of this information is codified in this very compact formula. Okay, so that's what uh, was the, the other paper. So um, just to show you something, something new, we have been working on the uh, extension to the um, spin one square Hamiltonian. Um, in the paper, we showed uh, an effective Lagrangian uh, that encodes the, the higher spin uh, interactions. And this is something that has uh, been studied uh, in the literature. Um, for example, uh, for some low uh, order sphere by Porton and Rothstein and was later systematized to, uh, by Levian and Steinhoff. And in the paper, we show that the three level diff reproduces curve. But what about loops? So th that starts uh, just looking at the, at the first term with the uh, spin induced quadruple. So it has, uh, it can be written in terms of these uh, operators, which is um, like the analog of the, of the Pauli Lubansky vector. Um, okay, so we fixed into this Hamiltonian, in, into this Lagrangian. From it, we can deduce Feynman rules and go and compute uh, our Compton amplitude. There is nothing remarkable uh, about it. It's not nice. It's not terribly ugly. Um, it's just an ingredient to then go and uh, compute um, three particle cuts from which uh, we can compute the, the one loop amplitude. Um, here we don't have the very nice form, the generalized word identity. So um, the sum over states contains uh, the light con um, terms. Doesn't matter, we can pick convenient reference vectors and it's not terrible. Uh, you can actually go and compute. And then we get uh, the classical, uh, the terms contributing classically to the, to the one loop amplitude. So we have here, we shown here our triangle coefficients 
for the coefficient that go with the uh, triangle integral. Um, it has the Wilson coefficient for the uh, spin induced quadrupole. There they are, triangles. So um, then we go and do the computation on the on the EFT. And now our operators are those that contain a spin one square. So again, go computes your amplitude and we obtain uh, these terms. And after the matching, so we get arrays from our uh, full theory, like the, um, the information from the triangle coefficients. And we can determine what will be these guys from the matching. So the coefficients um, that will go into the Hamiltonian for these operators are, are done like that. Okay. Um, then we have a, a Hamiltonian, so we have to go, go and check it. So um, after all the uh, vilification of the uh, EFT that I've heard in, uh, during this week, and they say, we hate um, gauge dependence and why do you why do you do that? We have a perfectly uh, nice object in our amplitude and you go and use your EFT and turn it into something uh, that is gauge dependent. So um, sometimes your friends uh, speak uh, gauge dependence. So one nice thing, one vindication of the EFT is that we can turn it backwards and then we can feed it something that is gauge dependent and it will bring you a, a nice amplitude. So that's what we do. Um, as a check for our computation, we grab uh, parts of the NNLO Hamiltonian from uh, that was computed to spin square. And this is shown in a paper by um, Michel Levy and, and Jan Steinhoff. And they computed from the uh, EFT of post Newtonian gravity. Looks something like that. So then we grab that Hamiltonian and we feed it uh, into our computation for the, for the EFT amplitude. And that will give you this guy. And these coefficients match exactly uh, what our computation from full theory um, gave us for, for the amplitude. So this is one uh, pass check for our amplitude Hamiltonian. There is another check that we have in the in the literature, um, which are spin square Hamiltonians uh, in a test body limit. And they are in a paper by um, Tanya Hinderer and John Steinhoff, uh, Justin Bynes. So again, to compare with uh, the overlapping uh, parts of it, we can also get this Hamiltonian, feed it into our EFT and obtain an amplitude and compare to our amplitude. Um, we didn't have to finish we didn't have time to finish this uh, before the talk, but stay tuned for our uh, upcoming paper. So moving forward, um, so the amplitudes become increasingly cumbersome if we want to go to, to higher spin. Um, I mean, who would have thought that, that using a, a Lagrangian will uh, lead to complications? But Okay, so we need a better way to, to compute them. Um, there are some very efficient uh, techniques out there now. Um, there is massive spin or helicity. There are geodesic equations from recent papers. Uh, but the question is, how much can we exploit them if we aim to, uh, to keep the Wilson coefficients uh, arbitrary? Um, another question is if uh, we can get the double copy to, to help us. So maybe computing in, in a different um, theory and double copying it uh, will help. So, um, yeah. Note added. Um, so Raphael uh, posted this in um, in the Slack channel uh, yesterday, and um, he says that he has overlapping results. So he computes also generic spin for spin one, uh, spin one, spin one, uh, which has to be equivalent to the results that, that we have here. Um, he is in covariant gauge, uh, I think. Well, so it will be interesting uh, comparing nodes going going forward. Um, yeah, so that brings me to my uh, summary and, and outlook. So we have computed, uh, we have developed a formalism to compute spin Hamiltonians uh, from scattering amplitudes and matching to an effective field theory. 
Um, and then with those Hamiltonians, we can compute observables. But then we observe that um, we can express this in an icona like formula to order g squared. And we have a conjecture for uh, higher orders. And we need to uh, prove it or uh, at least test it, um, computing some, some higher loops. Um, we also have now the computation that wasn't in our previous paper for some spin one square. Um, so it will be very interesting to uh, explore the relations and the cross checks with um, the PMEFT um, approach of Porto and collaborators. And for our uh, outlook, um, we want more spin. Um, going to spin cube looks pretty straightforward. And then we can um, try to compare to, to the results of uh, Guevara Chirov Bynes uh, or that given. Um, so Michelle Levy has some computation to spin a uh, cube, um, but it, she hasn't translated to uh, Hamiltonians or uh, observables that we can uh, compare to easily. She has promised a paper. I hope I'm looking forward to, to it. And also uh, try to go to more loops. Um, so the new techniques of integration into loops make it seem within reach um, and explore the double copies. Uh, so far, we have a double copy that goes to, to QED because we are only interested in, uh, in Compton and that's special and then we can uh, keep it a billion. But if we wanna go to, to five points for two loops, uh, then this no longer works. So maybe explore it with a, um, with a real uh, Young Mills theory. So that's, uh, that's me, thank you. Thank you, Andres, for a very nice talk. So I guess we have some time for questions now. I guess I can go ahead. So um, have you done any check with the self force computation I guess up to one loop, you care about one self force, or do you care about the higher orders in self force expansion? Yeah, um, short answer is no. Uh, we haven't done any any self force um, any self force check. But for the things that we have uh, right now, um, I guess the checks that uh, Justin has done with with self force. Um, they overlap completely. Um, but no, I, I haven't talked of that. We are too, um, too low, for example, in, in spin to, uh, so that we don't have an over overlapping uh, check with Hamiltonians. So I think Donald has a question. Please go ahead. Thanks. Um, yeah, just, um, Andres, um, when you computed the uh, Compton, um you just put in the terms on the world line with one power of Riemann? Yes. Um yeah, so this is our um this is the, the effective field theory that, that we are considering. It's only linear response in the in the curvature. Um with um when we go to high orders in spin, for sure, you will need to uh, start adding um, curvature squared uh, terms. Um, now, I, I believe the reason why people don't add um, this kind of uh, curvature squared terms for low spin is that, well, for gear people, because that would be too high uh, in the post Newtonian. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we can claim that. What we are doing here uh, captures all of the linear in curvature responses. Um, we are uh, looking at uh, curvature squares. Um, so Michel showed uh, many of the of the things that uh, need to be considered. And I mean, at some point we have to uh, maybe uh, consider an EFT that will encompass all of those interactions. But so far we kept that um, linear in curvature. Okay. Thanks. So, Rafael, please go ahead. Hi, Andres. Very nice. I did not know you were doing this. 
Um, I have a question. Sorry? Say again? No, go ahead. No, no, I have a question. Um, yeah. You can see my slides, uh, the angle. Have you computed the scattering angle for a line spin? Um, I haven't. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Um, so uh, you have not checked, for example, that you get care the same that I mean, Alex. No, no, no. Uh, Sorry, yes, I have, yes. So okay. I, I reproduce GOV. You reproduce what? Um, the and GOV. The bar of of binds. Yes, I have. <laughs> Which is also just in conjecture, right? From the test body. Um, yes. So you have, so for C equal one, you get the same answer. Yeah. I see, so, but, so then you, you have also the generic C case or not? Yes. For the scattering angle. So, can you show me the answer? Do you have that? Um, I don't have it in my slides, but uh, I do have the answer in Mathematica. So. Okay. Okay. Yes. So okay. then we can compare it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Align spins. Um, I have the uh, the angle. Um, so what I did is graph my uh, amplitude, and then take it uh, like um, transform like iconal phase. And, yes. Um, that matches exactly. For C equal one, that matches GOV, but I also have the, the result with uh, arbitrarices. Okay, good. So we can go back. Excellent. Thank you. Can I ask one question? So, um, Rafael, so you have been talking about this equivalence between uh, the radial action and the, the iconal phase, and it's supposed to break down at 3 p.m. or so. So, it does it hold for? For this case, uh, you know, spin alignment. Well, the, the boundary to bound dictionary translates to a line spin directly. It's very easy to see that yeah, everything yeah. we found, okay. right? Yeah. In fact, now if you look at our deflection angle for generic uh, spin, it gives me the periastrum advantage exactly, which is an answer that was computed in post at least in, at the order that we can compare uh, directly, right? Uh, for the generic case, we're trying to work out how to get the other angle. Now, for the iconal phase, uh, what happens is what, once you go to two loops, then um, the U direction contributes. And then Julio will tell you, well, you just need to transform to this new BE. Unfortunately, the way it enters now in the, in the angle is not so obvious how you get D by DBE out of the computation at two loops. At one loop is very simple. We actually show in the appendix how that works. At two loops, I have not figured this out. But uh, um, Gusta have this way to compute that is very resembles a lot of what the Julio and company have done. So it looks like maybe they are actually computing the iconal phase, but it's not clear yet how to map um, the, those two at two. I haven't yet found the, the, the map. Is that, so that, is that what you're asking? No, I, wa I was just asking about one loop generic spins. Generic oh, no, for, for one loop, I can get the same. And in fact, for the, for the line case, it's straightforward to get the iconal phase. Okay, 